everyone. Hello. It's Laura and Nato from Cloud Underground, and we're back for another weekly GitLab webinar. Yeah, GitLab webinar. So let's talk about some stuff. We're building a company. We're going we're gonna to build a company right now. Well, we've kind of pre-built some things, but we're going to go all the way through the process for exactly how you can start building a company, and then you're going to have to bring your ideas, your visions, your passions, but we're going to use w the company that I'm building as an example of, you know, like a sample company. So replace my business idea with your business idea, <laughs> and we're going to give you the know-how, but then there's a problem. If you start to create ideas and you start to create solutions, you have to be able to find someone who wants it. Otherwise, why are we even doing this? So we're going to quickly go through how it is a company built real quick. You can actually build a company by the time you're done watching this exactly <laughs> the way that we're showing if you just want to go and start a company real quick. And better yet, it's a company model designed to prevent vendor lock-in. So regardless of how you start, you can change anything that you start with in this model down the road. You're not trapped, you're not locked yes. in. Better yet, we like a lot of open source, so you're not going to be trapped in with bills early on. And if you start adding bills, you can do that later when you feel like spending some cash or with money that you make. But we can't have money without people who buy things from whatever it is that we make. So you need people to buy what you make. So how do you build a company that can have products and solutions that can actually make a living and then on top of that getting those products and solutions to the right people who actually want them and then and finding those people in the first place how do you find a customer <laughs> that sounds impossible building a company sounds impossible enough and then all of a sudden it's like you spent all this time all these years and now you have to somehow stay in business that's right amazing <laughs> <laughs> so Let's, let's just be real. Uh, how much money do you generally need to make for, uh, especially for like tax things, uh, but what, what's the general ballpark amount of revenue before like you should probably start thinking about how your business is structured and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just write this down real quick. So we're going to talk about how do businesses get to the 250,000 dollar threshold how do companies get there uh, because you can't really hire employees and if you've ever heard of a software engineer they can cost a hundred thousand dollars all by itself and I think oftentimes a lot of standard consumers will be like wow how could someone make two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year that sounds impossible but just the fact that you're likely getting paid means that whoever's paying you probably has no choice but to at least make that or there's no way you could actually have a job. Well, and make and and funding an employee is way more than just their salary because there's a lot of other things that go along That's with right. that government things that you have to pay as well. So. Government things. <laughs> government things. Amazing. So <laughs> The point of this is that it, it can't be a mystery for how you get paid. And it can't be like every person on this planet can't just be like, I have no idea if I'm going to get paid this month. Now, layoffs are one thing, getting fired is another thing. But like just in a standard world, like businesses would not exist if it was not possible to get to the point where they can afford to pay you. So how how do we start building a business? So let's just talk about this real quick. So business equals systems and it doesn't necessarily mean servers so if we're talking about business equals systems a server might be a system a business process is a system best practices is a, that's a system following your compliance that's a system business models um yeah, yes absolutely yes even and having like a social media calendar schedule is a system and make sure you check the link associated with the stream because we are actually sh we're sharing one of our systems for free. The Drop that's Squad right. Survival Guide is a system that's free. You can use it today. So first and foremost, step one, uh, check out the Drop Squad Survival Guide, which is where our, the framework we're going to start on the business model. So uh, starting business model.
Yeah, and like NATO said, that's uh, you can find that a link to that in the description of this video, wherever you might be viewing in right now. Yes. Um, we'll take a little high-level look at that in a bit, uh, but right now we want to kind of get right into the process of, okay, so we, we're going to go from GitLab, we're going to build a business, and then we're going to start learning how do we make sure that we have an idea that can get to people. So the, the business that I've been building, for anyone who's been following me, we're going to take a look at it, is uh, it's built around Final Fantasy 14 streaming. Now, just because I need to find fun ways to teach people how to make money and I can't be bored, <laughs> I started building a streaming business. Why did I start building a streaming business? A, I don't want to be bored. B, it's important to me to be like, I want to show that you can actually make money doing almost anything. And I could be like, look, you can make money with cybersecurity. And yes, you can. You can make so much money with cybersecurity that you can just make a lot of money with cybersecurity. You can mm -hmm. make money doing software engineering. You can make money doing all these things that people know makes money. But you can make money doing things that most people don't necessarily talk about makes money that often unless you, you, you maybe you watch streamers maybe you've heard of them and stuff like that mm -hmm. but believe it or not people can make a living playing games so <laughs> for me that's my idea is the final fantasy stream that's my product the thing that i'm creating yours is going to be different and but but everything under the service that you provide everything under what you're providing is your business system so uh, you will need your own business idea. Mm -hmm. You could use mine too. So someone could copycat what I'm doing. So copy cat me or get your own idea. Now, this is important. It is okay to copy people in business. If you don't copy people in business, you might actually suffer a little more because reinventing wheels... It's never fun. <laughs> it's that's really why, that's why we, and really expensive. Yeah, that's why we uh, <laughs> encourage everyone to use first principles thinking. And yes. It's one of the pillars of our business because... With a wheel you don't have to rebuild. Exactly. Go, go find the wheel that is already exists and iterate on it. Don't build a new wheel. First and foremost, I'm going to show you the business that's already built. We're going to log into this. This, this is a business. And we're going to talk about exactly how this business was built and how you can build this business. We're going to diagram it out. And more interestingly enough, this is what the business looks like under the hood. So, <laughs> so this is monitoring the business we got to monitor everything we got to make sure that things are good if i'm doing a, t a stream for final fantasy i have to make sure that as i'm playing my game or whatever or i'm r delivering my service my service has to have ways to make sure that i can guarantee my service that it's not going to just like tank that i have a way to provide quality delivery is is kind of the way that we could think about that uh, so we have to have ways to monitor the general security, general operations of whatever you're building. So what is it that you're using here to monitor? So that's, that's what we're getting into. We're okay. going to talk about how to do that. So we, we have at a high level, we just want to get the themes. Don't focus on the tools right now. The themes is we have to monitor what we're doing so that if something goes wrong, it's not a surprise. Step one. And then we have to have a place where whatever we're creating, like where does our product live, not only do we have to know where our product lives and where it's centralized, uh, we also need to understand things like how can we license what we're doing. So this right here is GitLab and what we're also looking at is GitLab is running inside of the underground nexus. For those who have been following us for a while, you've probably heard of the underground nexus at some point. The underground nexus is a copy-paste data center. Not only does it configure a complete DevSecOps pipeline for you powered by GitLab with GitLab in it, all these things, configures all this, so it deploys and configures this for you, uh, but it also builds everything that you need to not have to focus all your time on the technology because if all your time is going into your tools and technology, where's your time for your customers and how can you run a company if you have no time for customers? 
No time for customers means no money. No money means no business. No business means you could go get a job. <laughs> You're not going to continue running a company. Mm -hmm. So you have to make money if you don't want a job. Uh, it's just a thing. Or I guess depending on where you live. I have family members who have never had jobs and have just found ways to just live. So it's not to say that it's possible, but if you want to have like choices in life and not just live off of like, if you don't build your own systems, there are plenty of other systems that would love to tell you what to do. So you can either follow the government's systems and it will tell you you have to follow its systems. You have no choice if you'd follow that. You just have to follow their systems. Or you could get a job, which that means you're following the job's systems. Or you can create your own systems. And your own systems can only be sustainable if you know how to protect them, all those things. Uh, so anyways, things like uh, GitLab is then going to allow us to host and build our stream. So then uh, what we have here... so we're able to monitor all of our entire everything for what we're doing in terms of like IT observability, data center observability. Uh, with Nagios Enterpi Enterprise Monitoring System uh, is what this is, is NEMS Linux. And then uh, we are also able to use, if we take a look at the underground nexus we'll just go into the an underground nexus soon. so if, if you've ever seen the underground nexus this is inside the underground nexus it runs this thing called a git bios uh, but if I scroll all the way down to the bottom of this um, we have the architecture for the underground nexus hanging out down here so this is inside the underground nexus if you ever deploy the underground nexus and open Firefox this is what you're going to see uh, so you can so if we're gonna visualize the underground nexus uh, we have a uh, a software factory pipeline so if you're building software so Final Fantasy is software trying to stream requires software so a streaming service requires me to have what I need for basically turning my streaming company and then I'm gonna need more than Final Fantasy I'm gonna need marketing resources I'm gonna have to have a way for like people to like participate in what I'm doing so that I can generate resources and then I also have to understand uh, things like if I'm uh, doing a business I have to as it says do you understand <laughs> do you understand the terms do you, understand? you have to understand the terms <laughs> so you have to go do actual research to understand this is important really really you're not going to be working with other people's licensed software if you also aren't paying attention to how their license work just like if you're building your own licensing and you're building your own resources then it's up to you for how you're going to build your licenses why does GitLab matter if you're not using resources like GitLab and things like that that help protect your resources as you're building and your marketing collateral and everything that you're doing the minute you start marketing then people can just take your collateral they can just take your resources and be like haha no one said that they claim this, so I can just say it was my idea first because there's no proof. Don't let that happen, please. Another reason why it's always good to just like put your logo all over everything. <laughs> yes, yes. And then one thing about Git, GitLab, is it gives you versioning and it gives you dates and history, which is very important. When you have dates and history, then that allows you to protect your resources and assets in the context of court. Amazing. But if you have not done the due diligence, then you cannot protect what you have not taken the effort to protect. And that's a thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, how did we build this? So the first thing that we did to build this is not necessarily as complicated as you might think. Uh, the first thing we did to create this whole thing uh, is if you actually just go to our website and we have all kinds of sh sh uh, courses and things like that uh, but if you go to our uh, website we have this uh, underground nexus drop down here and if we check out cloud underground dot dev scroll down and uh, find your underground nexus free download here you can you can open this up and we have quick start guides I would say just scroll down actually you know what 
there's there's it's e even easier just keep scrolling and uh you will find the there quick is. start guide it's right here it's just it's on our website so just go to our website just watch the video that's probably the easiest way to figure out what what in the world are are we looking at madness <laughs> madness right okay madness so now we know at a high level that we can build a business and uh, we're going to learn where to start so you start with the underground nexus so let's let's just do this let's just get into it so let's just start Step building one. let's start building right now <laughs> not tomorrow do it now now okay so first we're just going to copy paste yeah so the underground nexus is super easy to deploy um all you need is docker desktop and then you just copy two code or two lines of code essentially into the terminal there or into the terminal on your computer and uh, it will build itself. It takes, it's, it's a bit of a package to like to build. So the install can take a little bit of time, probably depending on your like internet speeds and stuff. 30 minutes to an hour. Yeah. In some cases like 15 minutes, it depends on how fast your network is. Yeah, totally depends on your network speed. Here it's like 15 minutes. But, but it, essentially you can set up your own underground nexus in less than an hour. So the underground nexus is a software factory pipeline. It's uh, and a cloud operating system. It's like, it's so many things. It's basically, uh, you can do a lot with it. And yes. you can build business with it. Absolutely. It's a great That's what place it was built to, for us. Yeah. It's designed, well, so we used to just build the same thing every time we were spinning up like business projects. And it'd just be like, same configurations again, yeah. same configurations again, same configurations again. And then you end up having to try to do it faster and faster and faster. And then you end up just getting really burnt out. <laughs> I hate Try being do burnt out. the same out. thing over and over and over again. And then you never get to your customers because you're just too busy doing this stuff. And you're just like, <laughs> okay, in five months, maybe I can get a customer, but five months, I, I can do this. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> Sounds like a joke, but it's kind of true. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, number <laughs> number two, uh, log in to the underground nexus and set up your GitLab. Yeah, so GitLab comes pre-built in the underground nexus. So once you have it built, you can just start using GitLab. We're going to do it. We're going to do it right now. So you go over here. Yeah. And then you go to your Firefox. You're going to have to open Firefox. If you don't know where Firefox is, you just go to menu right here. Come over here and boom, there's Firefox. <laughs> and then we scroll down because it's amazing to scroll down. Scrolling. Oh, my gosh. It's so amazing. Anyways. Scrolling. Scrolling. Who knew? It's one of the best things GitLab. on the planet that you can scroll. Whoever invented scrolling. So GitLab. This tells us how to get into GitLab. Better yet, we can click on this and it's going to open up GitLab. Uh, which I have it configured in a way that is going to open in a different way on this instance. But you do need to make sure that it is an AMD64 system or it's not going to open GitLab. If you are not using an AMD64 system, um, let's see, GitLab. So yeah, so this is a this is an example here that works uh, just right out of the box. Let's say you just pasted the underground nexus. You just click on it and you can start logging into your GitLab, get configured. Amazing. You can do amazing things. So. And if you don't have an AMD 64 system, it's just. You can just install GitLab. Perfect. So Raspberry Pis, there's actually an install for, uh, let's see, let's just pull it up. Uh, GitLab. There's an install for uh, GitLab on Raspberry Pi. Oh, cool. So you can just head on over to their website, and it's not it's not all that bad. But perfect. Basically, you can just Google install GitLab on Raspberry Pi, so you can see you can get uh, uh, all tiers self managed. So you can have whatever flavor of GitLab you're looking to set up, build, or install. 
don't make it too complicated for yourself. One reason we love GitLab is because they have guides for almost everything in existence. Mm -hmm. uh, so if all you have is a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi, then what you can do is you can install GitLab in the Raspberry Pi itself and then install the underground Nexus. So that's, that's the only real difference if you're not using AMD64. Uh, but yes, you can build a whole business with nothing but a Raspberry Pi or more. And mm -hmm. then you can scale at will. So just because you start with a Raspberry Pi, remember we said that this has is a way to do it where you can grow as you can afford it, at your pace, with your chosen budget. Maybe you want to spend $10,000 on systems, or maybe you want to spend $100 on systems. That's kind of up to you. Uh, I'm teaching this approach because the budget is kind of just completely free. Free and flexible. Yes. So... Yeah, getting into the understanding that okay now we want to log into the underground nexus we want to get into GitLab now how do we monitor it so now we can go ahead and configure our observability amazing Amazing. So we want to configure NEMS Linux yes. to get all the things. Now, if you are working with smaller infrastructure and you're not spending a whole lot, you can just kind of head over to the NEMS Linux website. And on the NEMS Linux website, uh, you can just go over to where we have NEMS for Raspberry Pi. Hey, NEMS for Raspberry Pi, everyone. Amazing. And you can just download it. Amazing. Perfect. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> and it even has a video that shows just how easy, you know, you can make it full screen if you want, but uh, it shows just how easy it is to basically get your Pi set up in about two minutes. About two and a half minutes, who cares, you know? So it's yeah. not really that painful. You could go and configure Nagios yourself manually, and that's going to take you about months. <laughs> or you could go and get some other logging observability configuration, and that could also take you months. Uh, or. <laughs> or let's say that you have a little more budget than maybe uh, some might have, and maybe you're looking... Yeah, I guess we should say, too, that NEMS is open source, so it doesn't cost you anything if you want to use it for observability... Yes. So, NEMS, this is, um, this is basically, save whatever image that you're using with your NEMS in your, in your GitLab. So then you save your NEMS file, whatever you're doing, what version are you using, how, what's that resource, put that in your, in your GitLab and start saving your processes, like what resources do we use, centralize all of that, save systems. it all. Create systems. systems. Amazing. Keep save it all them. in one place. Throw it all into GitLab. Repeat them. Oh, so good. So if you're using it on Raspberry Pi, it kind of looks like this, and it kind of works like this. Anyways, there's more to it, but uh, I'll let you play with that on your own time. Uh, alternatively, let's say that you want to install NEMS Linux on something terrifying, the big $10,000 build. Uh, then you can come over here, and this is a very, so this is like a, this is a thread ripper, like 128 gigabytes of RAM, and, uh, I don't know, like 64 logical cores or something? Yeah, it's pretty. It's a beefy system. So if you have the big chunky thing, then the way to have a running NEMS uh, virtual machine, because mind you, this is a virtual machine, and you can also emulate NEMS on systems that don't have virtualization. So for example, like this is basically a super powered Raspberry Pi. Um, so GitLab doesn't deploy on ARM systems, but you still have, uh, without installing it uh, in the way that I showed you, uh, but you can still come over here and you can actually emulate uh, virtual machines. So to emulate a virtual machine, it's not all that different. There's this little thing that has architecture options and boom, you're going to need to emulate x86 64 
this <laughs> system. I don't know why you would, it, since Raspberry, Raspberry Pi can run uh, Nems Linux, just install Nems Linux if you're using a Pi. I would say if you're l wanting to learn how emulation works, or in this case, this is a, what is this? This is a, this is a really painful system to manage configurations on. It's a Jetson AGX Xavier, so this is not a normal, it's like a, uh, it's like a Raspberry Pi if a Raspberry Pi had more cores and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Anyways, <laughs> so when you have something a little beefed, like a super power Raspberry Pi, I don't know if they'll ever get more powerful like that, then that's the thing you can emulate. Uh, you can emulate virtual machines. Otherwise, you don't have to emulate virtual machines if a system has virtualization already. Uh, it's a lot easier. You just come in here and you say new, and then you can just simply say import existing image. Now, if you're going to use this, then I would recommend using the virtual appliance from NEMS. So on the website, you might have noticed that you can go to the NEMS Patreon. If you go to the NEMS Patreon, it does cost money. But once again, if you're spending $10,000 on your on your NEMS setup, trust me, you can you can on you like can get server. into that Patreon. I promise yeah, it's, you. It's like a few bucks a month, and and Robbie's really yeah. cool. The Robbie's creator amazing. Of Nems Linux. We actually interviewed him um, earlier this week on our on the YouTube channel, so you should go check that out. Um, but yeah, it, it's you know a few bucks a month to get in the Patreon and help support uh, an open source software and a really cool creator. Yeah. Do it. Do it up. And the cool thing about the virtual appliance is that it really does just work once you import it. Just bring it in here, uh, run it, and then you can go in here and, and the default login is NEMS admin. The default yeah. password is also NEMS admin. <laughs> Amazing. Anyways, I digress. Let's, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so some other things that you can do is if you're using the virtual appliance, I would even consider uh, building a Terraform script for exactly how you want to manage your NEMS Linux deployment. So if you were to open a terminal inside of the underground Nexus, one thing I haven't talked about in a while, and I need to update the version on this, so maybe I'll do that sometime soon, but <laughs> we could type terraform-v and uh, I'm sure there's a newer version out there, but you can always update the version yourself or just wait till uh, we roll out a, the next Terra, a later version of Terraform. It doesn't really matter. Um, we always keep it on, an, on a stable version, so uh, there will be intermittent updates. But you can go and build a Terraform script and then just save all of your NEMS appliance deployment build configurations is kind of how I would recommend doing that, kind of. Absolutely, <laughs> not just kind of. Uh, versus Definitely when we come back <laughs> to this, then you can just simply build uh, your Terraform resources out uh, in just in a GitLab repository. And then you can go ahead and we're going to show you how you can start also configuring things like runners and things like that. So anyways, now you have something that can set up monitoring uh, that, let's see, in our configuration here, we've installed a little agent, which I'll talk about a little more later, that basically allows you to log into your NEMS Linux. Now, NEMS Linux does not have a desktop environment. so. We have a containerized desktop environment that you can deploy inside of your NEMS Linux virtual appliance. It's just basically a little connection agent that lets you access it globally with Chrome RDP. So uh, if you want to be able to have global Chrome RDP access to your NEMS environment and your cloud environment, now you can just teleport right on into it and start doing things. The cool thing about this is you can manage your NEMS Linux virtual machine and you'll find that it is a DevSecOps platform so by default it's configured to not let you paste into this. 
So you're going to have to just type everything you're typing into this little shell, if, unless you want to go and configure something called Spice and some of those other things. But since we focus on security first, the Underground Nexus is designed to be multi-tenant, which means that it's intended for you to start bringing other people into your Underground Nexus data center. And your virtual machines, if any old person can just come in here and start injecting things, that's Scary. bad. You know <laughs> Scary what? Day. Yes. So you'll <laughs> you'll find that we have taken measures which it's up to you as the configure to soften our security, but by default the security has to be there somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, anyways, security first. A little configuration here uh, allows you to then come over and say settings. And this now this is inside NEMS Linux. This little window is a window inside of NEMS Linux. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Uh, this then under settings. Oh, come on, thing. Move. Okay, there we go. It's, it's thinking. Uh, runners. Runners. We can configure a runner, which... Uh, to configure a runner, just GitLab's little thing there will give you a little guidance, uh, but I'll just show you all you need is a terminal. And then when you go over to that option, it'll give you guidance on how to just go and install whatever that is, likely some stuff that you can paste in here, and then a series of things to follow for getting a GitLab runner. And then you can officially start using GitLab to also manage your NEMS server. So you can have a GitLab managed, GitLab runner managed NEMS Linux server. Wow. And then you can now put your product inside of your underground Nexus copy paste data center and software factory so that your software can now be made available for customers. Now, We've been working on building a business, and I've been talking a little bit about this. So we're going to take a little sneak peek on what we've been working on. If anyone has been following what we've been doing, I've been talking about Final Fantasy fourteen. Why Final Fantasy fourteen, Laura? Well, it's free. Oh, well, it's it's I don't know. It's it's amazing, and uh, Nathan loves to play it, and it's a great thing to build a brand around because it's got a really strong community. It's well supported, uh, and they have licensing that allows us to use it as well for live streaming and that sort of thing so and it lets me run a software company maybe we might not think of game streamers as software business owners but if you're running a software company i mean a, a gaming company that you, where you're streaming your gaming you're managing software you're managing software configurations you're managing software applications you're working with software. You're running a software company. Now, maybe you are doing something like running cybersecurity services, or maybe you're running GRC services and you're configuring automation for all the boring things. Maybe that's something that you're doing as well. Uh, but Final Fantasy, it's, the other thing is do something that you can stomach. I like Final Fantasy 14 so much that. Uh, I've done like free work for them in the past as a beta tester. Uh, and so it, it, if I'm willing to like do something like that and not get paid, oh, shoot, I'll get paid <laughs> to do something that I like to do even when I'm not getting paid. Come on, come on. And then we can also make some money doing it. And then also I can stop doing like other work that I hate doing. I could, if, if I could stop doing work that I hate doing, I'm going <laughs> Anyways. Stream Final Fantasy 14 all day. <laughs> yes, and teach technology in, in a way that I'm not just bored out of my mind. And and that brings us to now we have to understand okay, so we've we've done all the things to configure a little business here. We have to do something else. What we have to do is we have to have an operating model so we've created the Drop Squad Survival Guide, which is actually an Automate Boring Things powered business model. Automate Boring Things is the framework that we use for building businesses. It's basically, we've just taken all of the boring things that we don't really like doing, period. And then we made a framework, like here, all of these things, 
it's like years i think i've been it's like seven years of stuff that i've been working on automating uh, and mm -hmm. then the underground nexus alone is like two years worth of automations that i've been working on and so automate boring things is a co grand collection of of the things that we automate and stuff that because i do come from business process i have a business degree i went to college for business i uh have run businesses of my own i've worked for many businesses Your parents are both entrepreneurs my parents are both entrepreneurs you got the leg up man <laughs> i so i'm not really worried about do i know business things yeah. yeah so let's let's start teaching these things so yeah and so it's like you might as well instead of doing all of the trial and error and like years of of trying to figure things out, you know, you can just follow our models and save yourself a lot of time and energy. Get straight to your customers, because if you if you have to try to build a business for five months with no customers, no income, it's tough. That's that's going to be a hard five months. You, you much, probably have to have another job during that time. Much too. easier five months if you know how to get some some customers while you're building. Believe it or not, you can get customers while you build. So let's take a look at how you can do these things if we if, if you can download this so feel free to download it yeah link in the um, description link in the description so in terms of automating the cloud underground way chat gpt let's talk about chat gpt there's a misconception that chat gpt should can just do all of the work for you but i have a better proposition just let it be an augmentation to you instead of thinking that chat gpt will replace you think of it as it will augment you well, I and do make you powerful. Way more work than the average person. Yes. So, like, yeah. think about anything that normally, like, there might be that feeling of, like, well, I can do everything myself, and maybe you could do everything yourself. But what if you do have five months of work that maybe four months of that is nothing but, like, writing documents? If you could change that instead of, like, four months of writing documents to, like, two, a week or two, or even four days of doing the same amount of work four days four months i'll let you choose you can always go and manually do it after you have money anyways the entrepreneurial operating system is designed to help you get your time back help you get uh some systems for how you can operate as an entrepreneur amazing yeah structure for your business essentially setting goals um you know organizing your team having you know, a solid plan and a solid direction of where you want to go. That's very much what the entrepreneurial operating system is all about. Because if you're just jumping into it and you're not, you know, thinking about the systems, then you're just creating chaos essentially for yourself and you're just going to be scattered and all over the place. So create True. some strong systems right off the bat. I couldn't recommend that more strongly as a CEO. I feel like that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned is systems systems right away true and then keep them and repeat them <laughs> the most the most all yeah. of the systems systems so then the seth godin book it what you can't read here it says you can't be seen until you learn how to see that's actually a thing uh it's a thing yeah that's the subtitle to to his book this is marketing and um yeah seth godin's a great uh you know marketer to follow uh and emulate and his books are amazing if you need any marketing advice and he's got a great business plan um on his website i think i think it's linked if you click if you download this you can click it and it'll take you to the blog post about it um yeah and so so yeah and he 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 has kind of a modern way to, to define your business plan which is you know five pillars that are a lot less kind of that are more like soft and like let's talk about the philosophy of your business yes before you get into the structures um, so, so, that yeah. you, so that you're not just constantly wondering why you can't get customers and why no one sees you. Yes. Why does no one see you? If no one is seeing you, that's a skill you have to build. If no one is seeing you, being seen is a skill. It's not a popularity thing, believe it or not. Some people might innately have that skill and they might not realize that it's actually just a skill that's, that they so happen to have either natural aptitude for or they've developed or refined whatever that skill is. But being seen is a skill. And it takes practice. And then you can, even if you're good at it, you can be better at it. It's the difference between making $100,000 and maybe $250,000. So you can start hiring some people. Uh, getting into Home Assistant, uh, that is something that lets you au build automations for your physical reality around you. Offices, homes, smart homes, and also using your own 
tools and resources uh, that can be kept off of the public web. But these are your automations that you can build and you can own and you can store those in GitLab and then have GitLab managed smart environments. So then uh, secure controls framework at a high level. This is the epitome of boring things. And if you ever go and look it up, this is the epitome of the things that you want to automate and get out of your life. And while we help businesses with this sort of thing, it is the ultimate customer distraction of things that take you as far away from being able to ever serve a customer as humanly possible. So if you're not organized and direct with these things, you will just never have a customer. So uh, to kind of get through this quickly, because we've gone through these before, you can look at some of our old videos. This model is inspired by a Airbnb. We're not saying that it is Airbnb. It's actually not Airbnb at all. <laughs> but if you have a home and your or that you own or you're allowed to like rent people out to then this is your tenant space that you can host people in and servers computers applications when you're hosting users you have to have your own systems compute servers so the underground nexus is your home for your users for your buyers and the flow works eerily similarly <laughs> to you know if compared to Airbnb uh, to get an idea of how you can build uh, basically a company that you can just continue to scale you keep scaling it keep scaling your labor and just use the underground nexus when you're getting more systems you can just start adding more underground nexus nodes if you configure one underground nexus node it's going to work the same way on the next one if you're using GitLab that means every time you're deploying more underground nexuses one thing about it is an underground nexus on a Raspberry Pi will generally work the same way as an underground nexus on this giant Threadripper or will work the same way as like something else. So like um, just kind of going back to that whole idea here, um, it's important to kind of have an understanding of like high level business themes. So we've broken this out. So I'll let you take a look at that stuff. Uh, we've talked about this and you can look at some of the older videos too. Uh, and so if I just kind of go right back to just like one thing you'll notice that if you are running like a, a virtual uh, appliance and you are running say like a $10,000 environment, it just kind of goes back to, I guess the, the emphasis I'm trying to make here is that whether you're using a, a virtual machine for everything or say like a Raspberry Pi for everything, it doesn't look any different. So we have a Raspberry Pi and we have a $10,000 system. The only difference between these is one is like a $10,000 environment and one is, it's actually more than a $10,000 environment, but the system alone that it's running on is about a $10,000 system. And then Raspberry Pi is about a $100 system. So you can, you can start, you don't have to have the big expensive thing to get started. You don't have to basically go broke just to start making some money. You can start making money and not stay broke. So we had a couple comments um, yeah. on our LinkedIn stream. Oh, yes. What um, are the questions? Well, somebody said it's like a knock in a box. And it's a game yeah. changer. Yeah. It's kind of like a knock in a box. I used to work in a knock. It's probably why I like knock things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And he was also asking who is uh, your ideal customer? Hmm. Not yeah. Who is our ideal customer? Yeah, yeah. I, I, he might have been asking at a certain time, and I just kind of missed it because we just hopped in. I should have been paying more attention. Sorry. Sorry. Well, we can still talk about ideal customers. Yeah, let's talk about it. Ideal customers. So, like, our ideal customer is someone who is generally able to make at least, like, $100,000 at least, and then their goal is to start taking like what they've been making their product and then learning how to better find ideal customer fits for whatever they're making so that's kind of our ideal customer is like someone who ha makes their own products their products might be cybersecurity driven grc driven uh they might be just like a software developing company or ideally if it's a company that builds software especially a company that prefers to use DevSecOps for how they build their products, or if a company's trying to shift left, um, our focus is on helping those individuals grow their company, or alternatively, if there is an enterprise-grade company who is ready for scale, 
then we help with scaling. So it's kind of the same thing, just at different sizes. So we have two sizes for the same offer. Are you a software company? Do you have services like products that you market where you par particularly and primarily focus on DevSecOps for how you like to build, deliver, and support your software for how you host your customers? Uh, and then it just kind of goes into our low end right now is if you don't know how to generate $100,000, then I would strongly recommend using free content that we do to get yourself to 100,000. Or There's so much free content in the world to get to $100,000. I've kind of gotten to the point where I'm a little leery. If, if someone's not at that price point to recommend that they should go spend a, like a $1,000 on some coaching or $1,000 to learn how to get their product to a client, uh, so anyways, I guess our ideal client, since someone did ask, if you are someone who builds, you know, you're the maker, you're the builder, you're the vision holder, and your goal is to get out of the technology and spend more time with your clients, then you're our ideal client. And if your technology in terms of it is like what's taking up all your time, your servers, your server configurations, your GRC, all the boring things, if you have a lot of stuff bogging you down and, and keeping you away from your customer, keeping you away from your market, uh, or if you don't even know how to identify your ideal client, um, if you don't know how to identify your ideal client, we you might we will probably have to come up with some qualifiers because I've I've found out in the past that if someone doesn't already know their ideal cl customer, they might not be our ideal customer. Because um, then we work with tools like AI and whatnot, and if you don't have enough like data mm -hmm. to work with, then our systems because we use AI to to AI and, chop off a yeah, lot of the boring stuff. Yeah. AI and machine learning to help you find like better matches, better clients, clients that you prefer working with and, and the right fit for what you made. So as a, as a business builder, what I've learned is you don't necessarily want to make a product that's for everyone. You kind of want to find like, who do you, who do you really want to serve? Uh, and then outside of that, your product's probably not made for those folks. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we have we make free content for a whole bunch of different folks uh, who aren't our ideal customer. And then our in terms of who we actually make our paid services for, uh, we used to almost exclusively work with enterprise, but now we're getting to the point where we can kind of afford to work with folks who don't have as big a budgets. Yeah, primarily um, solopreneurs and, and entrepreneurs. Yes, yeah, so we're expanding from enterprise. So we started almost exclusively, like, are you a giant company? If you don't have a million in the bank, we probably wouldn't work with you back then. Um, now it, I'm changing that to be a little looser. So is, yeah. you know, are you able to, can you afford a thousand dollars a year, maybe 5,000 a year? Uh, and then we still, our primary client is still bigger clients, uh, but we're trying to find ways to help smaller clients. And now that we can afford it, it's it's kind of complicated to figure out how to afford that market, but we can yeah, do that Yeah, now. we're we're, mm -hmm. we're working on some stuff um, to help, again, solopreneurs and, and entrepreneurs uh, expand their business markets using, using automation and machine learning and AI tools. So yes. Get you out we'll of be talking about that a lot more in in coming weeks. Get so. you out of the tech. Get you spending more time with your clients. Uh, that's really who I'm trying to find more these days. Is who's trying to get out of their technology. You already know the tech. You already been there, done that, and now you're more interested. And in like, okay, so I want to take it to the next level or whatever. Or I'm trying to trying to up the ante or trying to trying to scale so enterprise yeah, trying think, to scale yeah. and you know your ideal customer or you're a smaller company and you're trying to learn how to like maybe especially if you're trying to go one hundred thousand dollars a year to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year like to make that leap anyway so that hopefully answers that question yeah 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 it's a good question also um shout out to nems linux and hip hop sec ops for tuning in over on face or on youtube yeah. Love to see you guys in the chats. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and before we forget, um, we can we have to talk about. So let's take a look at the business. So how do I actually start building businesses? It's about as anticlimactic as you could possibly imagine. So this <laughs> is the DevSecOps Dojo. We have a Discord. Um, I'll temporarily make our faces go away here for the journey. So let's let's take a journey. Well, I guess we can just move our faces to the side too. 
that works as well. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so taking a look at this, um, I usually start almost all company projects or new software projects, whether they work out or fail, like just kind of literally in a Discord chat. Mm -hmm. In the past, it would be like, I would have a folder of text notes, uh, like TXT notes. I know a lot of people are like, you have to have all, I don't use any fancy tools to start anything. Almost <laughs> never. I almost exclusively start with text. Why? Trying to figure out what tool to use is a lot of time that could be a waste of time. By the time you know what tool to use, you could probably already have half of a product built. Uh, spending too much time trying to wonder a bunch of other things, just, I don't know, just start making things. So, yeah, we're also big advocates of and of MVPs, which stands for Minimum Viable Product. So just yeah. build something that you can get out to customers, just the, the minimum thing that you can deliver. Uh, and then you can start f getting feedback from people and start, you know, building upon your MVP to make it even better. And, yes, make um, it as minimum as possible. But start <laughs> start somewhere and just get it out. I think yeah. um, I, I definitely relate to being kind of a perfectionist and I'm, I like to be very like hands on and, you know, and I as a business owner and an entrepreneur, you, you have to learn to let some of those things go. It's true. It's never going to be perfect. And so you know just get it good enough and then get it out there yes and then people will give you uh feedback on how to improve it and it's probably things that you never even thought about because you were the creator and you were so in it and so close to it it's so um, true so it's you know a lot of times once you get it out there and start getting feedback then you can make it an even better product than probably what you even had in mind in the first place so Yes, and one thing that's important to know about this is do, starting in like a little chat channel or just like text files on your computer or just, I don't know, Word docs, whatever you want. That's enough to just like get a calendar link and then you can start selling your product by just getting people on your calendar and pitching your product to them until you start to get buyers and then fill your calendar up with your buyers and then you can launch an agency. Boom, now you can start making money to then go make get fancier tools. Um, and then you... Yeah, and then you have fancier tools. So anyways, we always start with, um, I use the Underground Nexus because it, too, because uh, it makes it really easy to just always uh, stage the same stuff. But what I'll do is I start by just starting with like a theme of what I'm trying to build or test, uh, which in this case, I'm, I'm building the configurations for NEMS Linux. Anyone who's in the DevSecOps Dojo can come and use all of this code and talk to me and you can build exactly what we're looking at straight from this channel uh, and ask as many questions as you want if you don't want to do it alone or you can wait till we eventually this is the beginning of 100 percent of our documentation if we have documentation for anything uh like this stuff that that comes here we don't ever start here we this is like a year after we've had this <laughs> like really yeah uh so a year after we've had that um then you know we start here turns into beautiful diagrams later uh and I then mean, really the underground nexus started at, with a github and then it kind of expanded out into all the beautiful things you see now yeah and so like with the final fantasy monitoring um with nems linux since it's just a virtual appliance it's super fast for me to just like okay go in here build my agent uh and set it up on nems linux boom now I am able to monitor my entire software factory. And in my case, I am monitoring Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, and then more ugly stuff. So once again, so this is all of the stuff that you can come to the DevSecOps Dojo to learn how to build the stuff that we do with in its earliest form. Uh, then NEMS Linux, uh, once it's up and running, you can get your monitoring up and going. You can start testing your monitoring, all that good stuff. And then, uh, so we actually don't... Uh, I don't host Final Fantasy XIV from this little uh, tablet. This is a tablet. But I use this tablet to stream from the big server to another system. And then NEMS helps me also maintain the stability of my cloud stream. And then the benefit of this is that I can play Final Fantasy XIV. And this, this little tablet has 5G. So wherever this little 5G tablet goes, it doesn't even have to have the power to run Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I just... I just basically stream that from the same server running NEMS over to the tablet. 
and then the other benefit of that is that the quality of my video stream so that Final Fantasy stays cl clean crisp and pristine uh, then I can make sure that I have uh, NEMS Linux running in the background to let me know how the quality of the stream is and if something's going on is, is it going offline or am I having problems and then what if my what if my frame rates seem to be dr going down what if it's not my frame weights? What if it's actually, you know, maybe if I'm trouble trying to troubleshoot and maybe I go over here and I look like my frame rates, this is showing, uh, you might not be able to see it, it's very small. It says that uh, it's 52 FPS right here on Final Fantasy with NEMS running in the background, all these things. And let's say that it seems like it's not really running on my remote system at 52 frames per second, which should be pretty smooth. Then, uh, you know, I, I can come over here, I can see that this is showing uh, 60 frames per second uh, on, on one image, not that it matters, uh, but you know, going to big environments and stuff like that, getting great frames. But what if the, uh, I guess, quality is suffering? Then NEMS Linux, as shown here, notice we have these yellow bars here. These yellow bars indicate that maybe my frame rate issue on my remote system that I'm streaming Final Fantasy to is suffering not because of the, the performance of the game itself, but because of the, the, the cloud connection, maybe the 5G's, maybe it's not a good connection for the 5G in some locations, mm -hmm. or maybe maybe the server itself is, is getting too much going on. It has multiple NICs. Maybe I have to go reroute my networking through different network interfaces, network interface cards. Uh, so then it, it gives me information so I don't have to guess what's going wrong. And then no matter where I am, <laughs> no matter where I am, I can then have the full power of my copy paste data center and my very powerful gaming streaming system anywhere, everywhere, wherever I want. And then I don't even, once it's built, I set it all up, then it just runs and I can automate the boring things, right? And then I can just focus on streaming and I can focus on serving my customers. I can focus on giving my viewers the best experience I can figure out how to maintain and then I don't I don't have to be burnt out all the time and then getting on stream just tired and burnt out and then I don't I don't even have the energy to be be happy you know uh, so you can't anyway even enjoy it <laughs> yeah can't even enjoy it so I want to be able to look at my uh, you know my performance and make sure everything's going And one cool thing about NEMS Linux too is when it's on your phone you can actually configure it. Well, actually, you don't even have to spend it. If you're using Chrome RDP, you just get, there's a Chrome RDP app. You just open the Chrome RDP app, and then the Chrome RDP app, that's going to take you over to this. And then you can just go ahead and log in straight from your phone or wherever you want. And then whether you're on your phone, whether you're on a tablet, whether you're using a laptop, no matter where you are, you could be at home, you could be somewhere else, you could be not using a well, phone, phone goes anywhere. Great. Hey, <laughs> amazing. So you can always check on your uh, on your data center environment. You can see what's going on with your GitLab environment if you're noticing that there's some issues like, oh gosh, I've been noticing some networking issues. Maybe I can come over here and we can take a look at our analytics uh, with our our Final Fantasy streaming stuff, which I haven't fully configured yet. Uh, but then I can go and deep dive with GitLab into like what's going on if I'm starting to configure like runners and things like that and other tools and resources. Uh, so, you know, we can go and, and start to see what, what can we do to improve our performance, to start making things better. Um, so really, uh, that's how we start everything is an MVP for me is just put it in text, put it in a chat, get a calendar. And then eventually, once you've started making money, if we have stuff like this, you will never see something like this come out of like what we do unless like we've already made money on it. Because the sheer amount of time involved to like make all of this it takes time. Time. It's a, it's and it costs time, a lot of money. Time and effort. <laughs> time, effort, money. Time is money. Ooh, it's painful. So, yeah. you know, I do strongly encourage folks not to do the beautiful things until you've done the hideous like <laughs> boring things um, and just get a calendar link just get a calendar link and it's just it's just helpful you can do it on LinkedIn 
uh, one way that I'm going to just show at a high level just so that anyone can know how can you start like getting your services like selling anytime is you can literally just set up a your LinkedIn profile here um, hey you can you can do streams like us and see see yourself at the top of your profile uh, but you can go over and set a calendar link on your LinkedIn profile and boom make it to where it's easy for people to come over here and find out how to get a hold of you so that you can figure out like who's gonna be a good customer fit and start getting it just rip the band-aid off and get it over with this plus this is all you need to start selling something that you've put so much effort into and as creators please make money with your work please don't just work for years and not make money on, on, on your hard work unless you're doing like a not but like you're gonna burn out you're gonna lose your ability to like support your family you're gonna like there are reason you can't just you gotta you gotta gotta take care of yourself uh, and really you can just go and in LinkedIn LinkedIn lets you add uh, these so links meta. Look at us. I know <laughs> LinkedIn lets you add these links where you can go in here and configure your stuff uh, so that you can do that this little edit here and get these <laughs> links amazing amazing everyone you can do things uh, so anyways <laughs> I just can't get over us like streaming on our stream drop squads, ha, ha, ha. streaming on a stream yeah so I guess that, that that wraps it up that's a wow that was a beefy stream there's a <sighs> lot of information we just threw at you guys <laughs> I think my brain's melting anyways if yours is, then there's definitely. Is. Man, just imagine if I had to configure servers all day and then do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, really though, automate the boring things. Automate the boring things. Spend more time with your customers. I promise. Yes. Get make your work matter. Make your work matter. You made it. Make do something matter. with it. All right, you ready? You good? Yeah, Thanks, join, us join us next week for another GitLab Wednesday webinar. We appreciate you.